Okay, welcome to another video. Back to back upload days. That's fairly rare over here. But um today I'm going to say why each NBA team in this um in the NBA finals will win and ultimately who I think will win. So um without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start off with the Cinderella story, the underdogs, the Miami Heat. Um, they, no one thought they could get past the Bucks. Not a single person thought they could, except for Heat fans. And once they did, there was a little bit more hope for them. But very few people thought they could get past the Celtics. Very few people. But here they are, against the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, here's where they're going to win. Okay, they don't have the superstar power that the Lakers have, which I'll get to. But they have that chemistry. Like I it I think Brad Stevens said it's very similar to a Warriors lineup. And I can go and I can go and point out all these similarities. Like it obviously it's not a perfect correlation, but they play very similarly to what the Warriors played like. Um they have the three point shooting. Like Duncan Robinson, like how many how many people did not know who Duncan Robinson was until this year? I'm one of them. I had no clue who he was. I had no clue who Duncan Robinson was until this year. Um, so see Tyler Harrow. Like we've heard of him. That's probably because he's a rookie. But he's averaged he averaged more than twenty points a game against a very solid defensive team in the Celtics. A typically very solid defensive team. Okay, nobody expected that. Now, Goran Dragic has been benched throughout most of the season. Has now gone and averaged 21 points a game. Okay, and we haven't even gotten to their superstar. There's two superstars. Jimmy Butler is an insane defensive player. The grit and the grind... <laughs> you welcome, David Fisdale. Um, the grit inside this man is insane. He has to be the hardest worker in that... Well, actually, I don't know, because that entire team seems like the hard... Like, if you put any of them in a gym with... Like, if you just drop any one of them into a gym, uh, into any of the other team's gyms, they will be the hardest worker in the gym. That's the type of vibe I'm picking up from this Heat team. Okay, but Jimmy, he provides you with offense. He's not a great three-point scorer, but he's good enough. He's good enough from mid-range. He's good enough on the drive. But the main selling point, especially for this series, is his defense. Because he will be tasked with guarding LeBron James. I think I'll, I think typically we'll see a switch between uh, him and Jay Crowder will be the two tasked with guarding LeBron. But now let's get to their other their other all star, Bam Adebayo, who dominated every single Celtic except for Ines Kanter. Um, Bam just played out of his mind. Has played out of his mind this postseason, and everyone thought the Jokic and AD matchup was going to be amazing. I think this one will be even more even. Like, no offense to Jokic. But um, the AD and Bam matchup, they just complement each other so much better. Like, they mirror each other very well. Like, they're both great defensive players. They're both very skilled offensive players. Jokic was, is the more offensively gifted out of the three, but his defense isn't quite up with these other two, I would, I would say. Now, um, so yeah, so... What do I already mentioned? The Heat don't have the superstar factor, but they play as a team. That's what's going to gift them this win, is their teamwork, their team chemistry. It's just almost flawless, and that's why the Miami Heat are going to win this tournament. They have that chemistry. That I'll get into a second. Um, the coaching in a second, but they have the chemistry that the Lakers just don't. I mean, the Lakers have the strongest bond in LeBron and AD. But outside of that, LeBron's starting point guard is a guy who 
openly, uh, I think it was either short or signed, that said, F. LeBron. That's his starting point guard. <laughs> like, the point guard that had many duels with. That's his starting point guard. His starting center was a player that he faced regularly in the Eastern Conference Finals playoff. Yet, they know each other. They know each other very well. But they don't have the bond that this Heat team has. Now with coaching, I think the Heat have a huge advantage in the coaching department. Eric Spolstra might be the best head coach in the league right now. I mean, obviously, Brad Stevens is typically good. Greg Popovich, probably the best coach ever. Doc Rivers is not bad. I mean, he just got fired, but his history has shown that he is not bad. Nick Nurse, great coach. Mike Budenholzer is not bad. I'll, I'll give him. I'll give him that coach of the year. But um, Eric Spolstra and Frank Vogel just aren't even close when it comes to coaching. It's like look what like Eric Spolstra has coached this team to a championship. I can't say the same for Frank Vogel. Like I, I haven't seen the like. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. There are much, there are much many, much many coaches that I would, I would rather have Frank Vogel over many coaches in the NBA. But you can't deny the fact that he had two of the top five players in the NBA on his team. Spolstra had one top twenty player. Like, and yet they're. Both in the same, they're in the same NBA Finals. Now, let's move on to Lakers. Okay, I got four words, well, f five words, on why the Lakers will win: LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Like they're they're by far the two best players in the play in the um in the NBA Finals. They're the two best players last round I mean the only one that came close was Jokic and Tatum that's it and both those guys are gone so now it goes LeBron, AD Jimmy Butler like there's a huge gap like instead of this it'd probably be LeBron, AD, Jimmy Butler that's still not even there we go that's a much better gap but um, that's why that's the sole reason why the Lakers will win. Um, well, maybe not the sole reason. Um, their star power just is insane. Um, another reason: Rajon Rondo and Dwight Howard. I know I just said they don't mess well uh, chemistry-wise with LeBron, and I still stand by that. But um, those two, especially against the Nuggets. Played extremely well. Rondo's played extremely well the entire playoffs. But Dwight Howard against the Nuggets played so well. But um, they're going to need to take a step up in this series. Because who's going to be tasked with guarding Tyler Harrow? I, I, Danny Green's a capable defender. Very capable defender. I think that gets overlooked is uh, Danny Green's defensive ability. But uh, if... Oh, sorry, let me... But um, the Heat have two very solid guards, offensively scoring guards: Goran Dragic, Tyler Harrow, and Duncan Robinson, who typically starts. Who is Rondo going to guard? I I think he will more than likely guard Goran Dragic, and Rondo has to play in St. Dean's because Goran Dragic just averaged twenty one points a game. Granted, it was against Kemba, but still. Kemp was not the worst defender in the NBA. Like he he plays his heart out. Like that's like the emotion Kemba has it all. So twenty one points a game against Kemba is not shouldn't be overlooked. Um, so Rondo's gonna have to play out of his mind. Then with Dwight Howard, the Heat have three centers, three big men on their roster, and that's Bam Adebayo, who's an undersized center. Kelly Olynyk and Myers Leonard, who are stretch big men. At least I, I don't know too much about Myers Leonard, so I shouldn't say him. But Kelly Olynyk for sure is a stretch big man. 
Okay, Dwight Howard's gonna have to be mobile. That's that's how Los Angeles is gonna win it. Like if you look beyond the star power, it's gonna be specifically these two, um, Rondo and Dwight Howard playing defense. That's what it's gonna come down to. Also, if Danny Green and KCP can make more than one shot a game, that would also help. But um, yeah, I think now into my prediction, I think. This series is at least going six games, at least, if not the full seven. Now, I'm not entirely sold either way on who's going to win. Um, like, my mind is telling me, like, if I think about this as logically as I can, if I break this down, or if, if I don't break it down, if I just look at this, it's I say Lakers. But if when I do break it down more, when I look more in depth, when I compare everything, the heat of the advantage. Like I can give you five, I think I had five reasons why, um, like that, that I compared. And um, one reason was star power. Lakers clearly take the star power. So, so that's one, one point for the Lakers. Uh, the next one was coaching. One to the heat. Um, chemistry. Two to the heat. Offensive, um, just offensive capability. Three to the heat. Okay, that one might be a little controversial. But on the Miami Heat, their entire starting five could easily go for 30 a night. Three, de three deep in their bench can go for 30 a night. When I look at the Lakers, two players can easily go for 30 a night. In fact, they're probably close to averaging that. Rondo probably won't score 30 a night. Granted, combining his assists, that's not bad. Danny Green probably isn't going to score 30 a night. Dwight's not scoring 30 a night. Okay. Offense goes to the Heat. Defense, this one's about even because the Lakers have the runner-up and defense player of the year. Rondo plays good defense. Dwight, LeBron, Danny plays good defense. Um, the Heat play amazing defense behind Jimmy Butler. Bam. I want to give it to the Heat, but I'm going to call this one a tie, okay, just because of Anthony Davis. And then finally, co have I done coaching? No, chemistry. That's what it was. Chemistry. I Look at this. Lakers, Heat. And that's why I'm going to go with the Miami Heat to win in six or seven games, um, I wouldn't be shocked if the Lakers won. I wouldn't be shocked if the Lakers swept. But when I look at it, I have full confidence that the Heat can not only take this past a sweep, but can win this series. Now, I might be caught up in, okay, okay, the Heat just beat MVP Giannis. They just beat my Celtics. Now, like, I think recency bias might get caught up in that. But when I try to remove myself as far away as I can from that, it still points me to the heat. So, I got heat in six or seven. That I don't feel bold enough to take an exact game prediction, but um, heat in six or seven. That's what I'm going to, going to say. Um, thank you all very much for listening. Um, please leave a like, subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Leave a comment down below. Um, and I'll see you in the next video coming out tomorrow. Adios.